Thank you kindly. How's everybody doing? Good. First of all, I'm very grateful to be here. Uh, I'm grateful to sit next to Marsha. She was my private banker at uh, Chase Bank many years ago. She's loaned me a lot of money. And so I'm very, very happy. I'd like to spend this time to tell you a little bit about myself, and then I want to go over uh, 10 ways that you can create equity. And then I want to give you a quick case study on a transaction that we've completed with a CDFI. Well, I was born on the east side, Mac and Mount Elliott. And uh, yeah, <laughs> my family mostly grew up on Heidelberg, but I moved on the west side to a street uh, called Herbert. So I'm Herbert from Herbert Street. I was very poor. I stuttered. Uh, and, you know, but I had a burning desire to go come back and, and redevelop my community one day. And I found out later in life that's the best thing that could happen to you is to be born with a challenge. Because I was poor and I had a burning desire to be rich, I had to find out how to create equity. Now, if I already had money, if my old man gave me money, then I wouldn't be figuring out how to create equity. So the deals that I've done in my life, I can honestly tell you, Marcia, Marcia, you may have to hold your ears. You know, she's talking about she want money. We don't put money in. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, but... Uh, <laughs> But in any event, we have created a couple billion dollars in transactions in Detroit. I think that's more than any other Detroiter. I want to qualify that. Someone that lived in Detroit in history. So for a little kid from Herbert Street, you know, that's okay. I'm very, very happy about that. Um, so I've created Strather Academy. And I would like to say there, there's a, a, a couple things. We don't do things just for money. You understand? You got to have a burning desire. And, you know, the Lord really blessed me. I stuttered so bad I was in speech therapy, I couldn't speak. So as a result of that, my teacher made me take, uh, uh, participate in all type, kind of oratorical contests. And if I, if I was a normal speaker, maybe I wouldn't have been participating in these contests. So I won the Optimist Oratorical Contest. It was a wonderful thing. I won. Can you believe a little kid like me stuttered so bad? I mean, it'd be like, ah, uh, like, ah. Uh, and everybody busts out, you know, at elementary, they just grab their stomach laughing. Oh, oh, oh. She say, stop it now, stop that. And oh, I ain't going to do this no more. So I, one day I won the oratorical contest. I became class president of my class. I wanted to be the president of everything. So I had, I, I had a debt I could never repay. So I, I built optimist clubs over the world. I've built 150 optimist clubs. So I am committed. And it, 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 it helped me to have a lot of humility. So I'm an advocate for Detroiters, for our community, and uh, I'm a philanthropist. You know, when I built Woodbridge Estates, it was a $100 million development. The question was, Herb, if you build it normally and take an 800-square-foot unit, uh, you know, you'll make 12 million bucks, your group would. Now, if you're going to build it the way you want to build it, with 1,300 square feet, you're all going to get the same amount of rent. You'll make 2 million, 3 million. Now, which one do you want to make? I said, I'll take the two or three million. Now, I did, because I wanted my legacy to live beyond. And one day, my great, great, great grandkids would look and say, my great, my great grandfather built that. As it turned out, I lost a few million on it <laughs> because of the Great Recession. <laughs> but, but you know what? That's OK. Now, those apartments that used to rent at a market rate for 1,300 bucks is going for $3,500 now. Hallelujah. Hello, amen. Okay, then, so what I would like to do is to uh, get on with the show because I don't have a lot of time here, and I know my time is limited. Um, how many developers are in, 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 how many of you consider yourself developers? I think all your hands should go up. If you're involved in real estate, you're a developer. You understand? If you did one house, if you renovated one house, you are a developer. If you're an architect, you are a developer. If you're a finance, you're a developer. And you know the wonderful thing about Detroit? We have the greatest opportunities in the world. We got about three or four billion in equity. And it's all psychologically de devalued. I mean, tell me something. How is it possible that houses, residential real estate, could be going for 40% with interest rates at 35 and 4% and a huge demand? It's not possible, theoretically. Theoretically, what is happening is not possible. But why is it happening? Why does everybody in the world want to know which way is Detroit? They say that houses are cheaper than used cars. You go to California, Florida, they're having seminars about how to buy real estate in Detroit. This is our equity. 
and we have to harness this equity for our family and our future ourselves. The key reason there's a lot of noise in the industry, and banks, banks get reimbursed 97% for their losses. Now, most people didn't know that. How many of you knew that? Well, a few of you knew that. 97%, now if it's FHA, it's 100% if you have FHA insurance. But there's a deal, the banks cannot go after homeowners with deficiencies. So that's the trade-off that Obama made. And luckily, Trump kept that. I guess the banks are his constituents, so he kept it. So that's good. So this opportunity is not going to last forever. The sun, the moon, and the stars have aligned to create a stairwell to heaven. And let us, as Detroiters, take advantage of this. So I've created Strather Academy, where we're teaching the next generation of developers. And so the things that I've learned over closing $2 billion in deals is not written in a book anywhere. So I need to take what is in my head and put it in your head. Those of you who want to do it, those of you who are committed. Now, let's get this straight. I'm an urban developer, and that's where I develop, in the, in the urban areas. Uh, you know, the, uh, Birmingham and Southfield and all, they don't need me. Although we recently bought the Bally Building on Northwestern the other day. But that's about as far as I'm going to go. You understand? I'm right here in Detroit, and I'm going to, I was born here, I live here, and I'm going to die here. All right, so let's talk about it. Y'all ready for this? Now, for those of you who are developers or who want to create equ equity, the syndicators, you'll know what I'm talking about, and I can't go into super, super detail, because you have to use some of your imagination. What I have my bakers here, I may come borrow some money from them one day. They'd be asking me, ah, are you doing this? Ha, ha, ha. No, not, not, not really only that. But I don't have a lot of time, and I want to run through the deals. And um, uh, I would invite you to, to, to learn more about it. You know, I'll talk to you about it on the end. But one is using seller financing with participating promissory notes. You know, participating promissory note is a very clever thing because lenders don't want a second mortgage on, their, on, on, on the real estate. They, they want a first and usually not a second. Uh, PACE is really not a second. That is financed by, uh, 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 from your taxes. So you could use a participating promissory note, and it, and it is an obligation to pay, but it's an obligation to pay a certain percent. Like you, go, you may go find a deal, and maybe you don't have the wherewithal to do the complete development, but you could join Venture. You could take a 40% participating promissory note, which means you get 40% of the cash flow, insurance proceeds, refinancing, and resale. The only thing you don't have is the depreciation, and it is secured by an assignment, a pledge, of the membership interest in the LLC. That's how that happens. Use the standard PA creatively, purchase agreement creatively. Look, it's very simple to all the realtors in the house. How many of you know how to do a deal 100% legitimate right in front of HUD? And use a HUD one and take cash out. Anybody know how to do that? Okay, listen, if you don't know how to do it, I want you to join Detroit Association of Realtors. We'll show you how to do it. But in the meantime, I'll tell you very simply. Make the repair. Make the repairs an obligation of the seller. If you could truly buy something for 40 or 60 percent, it's not so great to record it at 40 percent. Especially if you're going to put 20 percent of repairs in, you really got 60. If it's 100 grand, you could buy it for 40. You're going to put 20 in. It's much better to. Wouldn't it be better to say it's 60,000 and get a credit back? As a matter of fact, Detroit Home Mortgage will not loan you the money unless the appraiser appraisal is less than the purchase price. Isn't that? They say it's fake news. They say it's psychologically depressed. And then they will loan you a, listen to this, y'all. It's almost unbelievable. They will loan you 150% of the after repair value. Do I, should I say that again? You should, you should fake almost. It almost sounds illegal. They, but they won't even loan you the money unless the appraisal is less than the purchase price and they'll loan you 150%. So very simply put, what you really do is make the obligation to the seller and let the seller be obligated to do the repairs. That's okay. Now, the seller is not going to really do the repairs. They're not going to try to please you because you don't like the kitchen floor, you don't like this. So they give it to a contractor, which is your cousin. Hey, cousin, how you doing? <laughs> y'all have to figure that one out. I ain't going no further than that, all right? Can y'all figure that out? Okay, I hope so. Uh, okay, so... The next thing, I believe, is to join the LLC. It's very simple. You could join an LLC. Yes, join an LLC. So last, a few years back this time, we joined the LLC, and you become a, a borrower. 
just jump in. I'm your partner. I may bring cash, management skills, whatever it is. We join and we become a partner and we go to the bank as a borrower and not a buyer. Just refinance. A borrower don't need money. I already owed it. You know what I mean? I mean, I join the LLC today and go to the bank tomorrow. But, you know, but you go to the bank as a borrower, not a buyer. Structure a tax-free joint venture. Now, that's really clever. You understand? You got a buyer. You got a, uh, someone that owns the real estate. You have someone else that have the money, the turnaround capacity, uh, can, can, can sign the guarantee. And you just form an, another entity. They can, uh, the, the, whole, the owner contribute the money to this entity, take out a, a, uh, a percentage of the membership interest. Now, it, it's based upon what those values represent. The uh, developer contributes the guarantee, the turnaround, development fee, take out a percent. Bingo. They are in the deal already. And you could structure that transaction because if somebody is selling, for example, they may say, you know what, I do not want to sell and sign a mortgage. You sign the mortgage. But you know what, you know what Marsh is going to tell you? If you own 20%, you're going to sign. But how about if you're a limited partner? Ah, how about the seller takes his interest out as a limited partner? No signature is necessary. Purchase via a bargain gift sale. And I'm going to give you a little chronology on a bargain gift sale because if you have no cash and you got to figure out how to make a deal, then you pay attention to everything. The bargain gift sale is over 100 years old. How many of you know what it is? And you know what? I have run into very few lawyers that do it. And half of my deals are bargain gift sales. It's a wonderful thing. I just closed one the other day, and I'll show you how those work. Bargain gift sales, internal revenue code, look it up, 170. Your life <laughs> has just changed. <laughs> Find a beard. You know what? Detroit Home Mortgage, we had a developing the developer seminar, and the young lady, Crystal Pate, was given the uh, example. She was, anybody know Crystal? She's a wonderful person, and she is an expert. And she was talking about developers you all cannot buy because you already own a home and all of that. But you can take others who want to buy, and you can join venture with them. If my cousin is a beard, you know what? I may buy from him. May find a deal, get the price up. I buy from him. He just made fifty grand. We just made fifty grand. <laughs> Let us put it like that. You can find a beard and cleverly structure deals. Think about this. Our goal in Detroit is to raise our property values up because the neighbors and everybody, they owe 100 grand. They certainly hope it's worth $100,000. The other day, one of my students was about to enter into a deal for $35,000. I said, time out. Don't sign that purchase agreement. I want you to take and make it $60,000. Aren't you going to put some money in the transaction? Yes. I said, well, sign it for the amount that you're going to buy and the money you're going to put it in. Make it for the highest possible price. I said make it for the highest possible price, and the difference, what the seller say, my left pocket. You got that? Okay. I won't go into great details, but here's the deal. Everything is structured right. Everything is legal, and if all of you were for HUD and FBI, I would tell you the same thing. And as a matter of fact, I have a TV show every Saturday, 11 o'clock, Channel 50. I want you to watch me this Saturday. I'm, if, you, if you don't come to my seminar, you're all invited to my seminar this Saturday also because our class is just starting. But every Saturday, this Saturday is with the land bank, and uh, we, 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 uh, we're talking about and, and joining forces to getting Detroit involved. This is our equity. People all over the world is going to eat our lunch. Are we going to allow this? How about our pride? I mean, this is really something. It's happening in every city in America. <laughs> and I'm not about to lose. Put up with this. I would rather die first. Excuse me. <laughs> Real estate for equity. If you got $10,000, it's worth $10,000. You put the $10,000 into the press piece of real estate and piece of real estate, heck, it could be worth $50,000. You could use it as equity. The seller may not want it. He'll give it to me as a fee. I mean, throw it back to you. It's all right. I am entitled to a fee. Pace, pace is great. You, maybe 15 to 20% towards your capital stack. And you know what's so fabulous about pace? One of the things, 
There's two things I like about it. One of them they don't talk about, but I created it myself after I look at it. You know, I always look at things and I say, if they, if they didn't say it wasn't illegal, then I can do it. <laughs> so you understand? In other words, nobody say, if they didn't say it wasn't illegal, then I can do it. I read, is it illegal? Or is it impractical? Because when I do a bargain gift sale, that's exactly the opposite. I th I am buying under a bargain gift sale. Normally, bargain gift sales are reserved for colleges, and people want to donate real estate. The very first one I did was 7711 Greenfield. Hugh Potaker, he owned entertainment magazines. He wanted to give the property and donate it to a college. I was on the board of trustees of Mary Grove and at, at Hartford Church, so I split it. I gave Hartford 50. We ended up splitting 50, 50 grand apiece. That was the very first thing. He wanted to donate the real estate. I said, hmm. So now I use it to buy. They didn't say you couldn't do it. Now I don't know anybody else doing that. But we buy using bargain gift sales. I better talk fast now. Borrow against real estate to create cash. This is really cool. So you, first of all, we don't buy to buy. You got to buy, you got to find value in a transaction. If something's worth a million dollars and you pay a million, why are you paying for it? You got to be crazy. I'm not paying a million dollars for something a million. It got to be more, worth more or I'm wasting my time in an environment like this. Now, maybe the interest rates are low. I mean, not uh, interest rates are low. By the way, interest rates dropped over the first few months. What happened to everybody's real estate? When the interest rates dropped, what happened to real estate? Go straight up. Now, bond market, I calculate that in a nanosecond. They'll buy it on the rumor of the rate going down. But we're slow. Do you realize that your portfolio has just jumped? Just run the numbers. Don't forget the debt constant or the debt rate, the debt portion of the equation of a cap rate, is consists of the interest rate and the amortization period. If the interest rate go down, the debt rate goes down. Now, 30 years at 3.65 is like 5.4% debt rate. So you can get a debt rate that have shrunk, and then you got the equity rate. Those two together blend them, come up with your cap rate. So what happens here? So what happens is everybody real estate have jumped. So you can create your cash just by looking at what the, 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 the just recalculating the cap rate. Or you can look at it because uh, rents are low. But what happened is the rent is low and you can buy it for a million dollars, but it may be worth a million four. Why don't you buy the whole million four? Well, how am I going to get the million four? The banks are not going to set up and loan you on Blue Sky. How about if I put up the cash? Now, y'all ready for this? How about if I borrow the money and leave it up? Oh, now the bank ain't let you borrow the money for them to leave it up, right? But if you got the cash in the bank, you put it up, you just borrow, you can figure it out. You understand? So when the, when the property gets there and you got 125% or 150% debt coverage, because I like 150% debt coverage, not 110%, not 120%. I like a substantial debt coverage because we do not have to take the risk that we more than qualify. Marshall loves 150% debt coverage. I got two minutes? Okay. So we got, you, so we could create cash. You could use brokerage development, construction, leasing, and, and tuition. So here you go real quick, and then I'm going to tell you really quick. This is it. Chronology of a gift sale. Form a 501c3 with a purpose to facilitate affordable housing. It must have that purpose. Fight, find, fight. Uh, I was typing this today in the other room. Find a property with appreciative potential, cap rate reduction, low rents. Create the equity. Enter a gift sale agreement. Provide a gift letter. Sign an 8283 IRS form. The seller have to get the appraisal. Joint venture with a guarantor if you don't have the juice. Or agree on the sharing, agree on the sharing ratio. Contribute the contract to LLC. The guarantor contributes guarantee and service. Close the deal. So I know that was quick. You said, Herb, that was very quick. I learned a lot. That was very quick. So, so here's what I would like to do. Those of you, how many of you found this interesting? Can I see your hand? Well, listen here. I'm going to invite you all Saturday. Saturday, Grand River and Greenfield, right above the Foreman Mills. We just moved Foreman Mills in last year. And we're right above there. You know, we're renovating that corner. You'll be hearing a big announcement about the Mammoth Building. You know, the, the, the Foreman Mills, <laughs> the Tower Center is, is one of Marsha's deals. She, she loaned us. Remember that, Marsha? Oh, yes. So I'm going to invite you all Saturday from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. If you cannot make it, please watch it on TV, Channel 50. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? We'll do that later. Yes. 
a phone number. I'm give you all my personal phone number. You got that? Especially all the ladies. Okay. <laughs> okay. 313-407-4930. 313-407-4930. Or if you don't get me on my cell phone, the general number 444-9691. 313 313- 444-9691, 10 a.m. Saturday. You go to Strather Academy because class is just starting Monday and you got a chance to come in and you got to close a deal to graduate without putting up cash. How do you like that? All right, thank you very much.